Is this is this on? Yes, my lord. Good, good. <clears throat> Hello, this is God speaking. Can we dial that down? Yes, my lord. Thanks. Welcome, new arrival to the Eternity Ward. Please take a number and make your way down to the left or the right to the waiting room. All you need is there the refreshments I made just for you. <laughs> I would tell you to steer clear of the apples, they're forbidden, um, and the two snakes. <clears throat> I mean, fools, sorry, that are chewing the fat in the corner, but you probably wouldn't listen anyway. So good luck, I bless you, and on your way. Welcome to the Eternity Ward, where we flick through old copies of Reader's Digest and chat with our buddies while we wait for an appointment with God. I'm Nick. And I'm Chris. Adams, you dropping your surname again? Yeah, I keep telling you. I'm like Madonna. I'm <laughs> so famous now. So, so famous. I've got like two people following me on Twitter. Do you have bodyguards now everywhere you go? Hey, I do Krav Maga. I don't need bodyguards. I am my own bodyguard. Okay. <laughs> uh, no. What's been going on, Chris? I was really excited that Ricardo won the Monaco Grand Prix. I know that you've been really into sport. You've been extremely busy today with basketball. I did watch a basketball game today. Yep. It's totally not worth watching. Don't bother. Oh, did your team not win? Did they lose? I don't have a team. It's just so for those of you that don't follow basketball, there's like this team in the NBA and they won the championship and then about a year later they signed probably the second best player in basketball to their team. And so they already had, you know, the best team in basketball by a mile. So they just became like way better than everyone else. And it's totally unfair and it makes basketball not worth watching, yeah. which sucks. I hate you, Kevin Durant. <laughs> so last episode, Chris. Last episode. We talked about the... The shit. We talked about... Yeah, I was trying not to swear, Chris. Jeez, I'm a reformed man. Just say the shit. We were talking about the shit. The shit. Yeah. And we talking about the shit. We were. <laughs> we talking about the shit, man. <laughs> We were talking about the shit that we wish Christians would stop saying. The sort of things that when we hear Christians come out with these statements, we just cringe and go, oh, no, that's what everyone's going to think Christians are like again. That's right. And so we, we went through our list. You went through a few things that you don't like. I went through a few things we don't like. But we always planned from the start to do this as a two-parter because we don't think it's fair to just you know, throw bombs at one group of people without throwing bombs at everyone else. We like to be the South Park of podcasts. We want to offend everybody. <laughs> I thought we did it rather kind. I thought we were kind. Yeah. Okay. We want to be kind, but we want to pretend we're assholes, Chris. Okay. It's fun that way. Are, are we going to do a third part? Your suggestion of um, doing one about agnostics, the fence sitters. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we could tack that onto the end. I don't. I don't think that'd be a whole podcast. But <laughs> no. yeah, it's funny because we're you and I are both essentially agnostics in many ways. Yeah, I know. So now we're going to talk about the shit that we wish atheists didn't say, or, or should we have a more sort of scientific term to it, like the oh yeah, the fecal matter that we wish atheists didn't discourse. No, that doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> You're obviously not an atheist, Chris. You're just one of those bumbling, idiot, irrational believers. That's me. Bing. Oh, I need to talk with a British accent. <laughs> Does it make that makes sense? me sound more educated. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, so mostly the last episode was, it was mostly because I'm the believer, I'm the, the Christian, so I was mostly sharing the things that I wish Christians wouldn't say. You, you know, while we're both mostly agnostic, you sort of fall more on the the non-faith side. So this is meant to be your list of things. Yeah. yeah, because I don't want to just be hurling grenades. But, you know, you're not an atheist, but you're more towards that camp than I yep. am. So it's your list. Although I do have a few things to say. <laughs> <laughs> you, you've got your fair share of hand grenades. Actually, one thing I did find really interesting was um, preparing for the last episode, I ended up with a very large list of things that I wish Christians would stop saying and coming up with a list for things that I wish atheists would stop saying. It's a lot smaller. That's yeah, one thing I yeah. found interesting. Well, there's two things I'd say about that, Chris. Yeah. Number one is I think your personality does tend towards criticizing yourself more than other people. Yes, true. 
And the other one is Christiani's been around for a heck of a lot longer, so it's had a lot more time to make mistakes. That's one when I was reflecting on it, I was wondering if that was the case. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's get into it. Yeah. Well, you should start then. All right. So I remember like, I don't know, five, ten years ago when... Hang, hang on. Hang on. No, no. I'm not going to let you start. I'm going to start. Jeez. Yeah, yeah, sorry. So this was one thing that we were discussing just pre uh, the recording here, which was uh, one thing that really cheeses me off about atheism is that yeah. I had to rewire my brain yeah. to spell something which should be spelled in a completely different way. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like, like you know, atheist is what it sounds like. So it should be A-T-H-I-E-S-T, right? And and when atheism first came along, that was sort of the way I spelt it. And then I went, Hang on. no, that's not how it's spelled. And I had to train myself not to do that. And, and I've been really good ever since. But it's not spelled how it sounds. That's why the people tune into this podcast, Chris. Spelling lessons. <laughs> A-T-H-E-I-S-T. That's how you do it. Look, your autocorrect will fix it up for you. Even if you spell it wrong your whole life. What, do you still spell it wrong, Nick? No, I've got it right now, but yeah, it's probably only the last year that I've started getting it correct. Yeah. You can start for real now. Start proper. Yeah, all right. The first one that comes to mind, when when I think of atheists, I think of, like, they come across as real arrogant. Like, as they can come across as though, like, Christians are just these, not just Christians, but other believers are, you know, like, they talk about it like it's, a belief in, you know, like Dawkins talks about the spaghetti monster in the sky sort of thing, just belittling the whole notion of belief in God and that people that believe in it just have to be, you know, so ancient in their thinking, so backwards thinking, so poor and pathetic and juvenile. And it's just so condescending the way they can talk about these faiths that have been around for thousands of years. Like Mm. you can't possibly think that every person that's been a believer hasn't thought about the issues that you're thinking about. Hmm. You're not the first person to have come up with the idea that, you know, there's suffering in the world, believe it or not. Well, there goes half my list. No, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I do, you know, that that sort of smugness at times, yeah, the the arrogance. And yeah, that whole sky fairy, you know, well, you know, believing in a sky fairy or believing in a flying spaghetti monster that you're talking about, like... No one believes in a sky fairy or a flying spaghetti monster, but there are millions and millions and millions of people that do believe in God. So if you get, you know, yep. if you're going to have a go at them for believing in God, you know, have a go at what they're claiming. And so it just, yeah, I find that really, it's just unhelpful. Uh, yeah, it's really unhelpful because it, you, you're not going to end up having a conversation if you're just accusing someone of believing in a wibbly wobbly flying spaghetti monster. It's not helpful. No. There's this concept in, I don't know if it's in debating, I think it's in debating, that when you're arguing against someone, or even just when you're having a conversation with someone, you've heard of this concept of straw manning. I think Mm. I might have talked about this in a podcast. But this is a, I mean, it's a really important concept. Like, I heard of the term for a long time before I really grasped what it was. So, you know, I think think explaining it, I would even appreciate a reminder of exactly what a straw man is. So explain, Mr. Nick, Dr. Nick. So there's this idea of straw manning, which is where when I'm having an argument with someone, instead of actually listening to their perspective and um, really letting it sit with me and trying to understand it at a deep level, I just take the real surface level parts of it and make real simple, uh, pathetic well, so you create something that you're going to be able to easily destroy, right? This is the straw man. Yeah. So, so, so you're not actually painting a picture of what they're painting a picture of. You're painting this alternate picture that picks off simple bits, you know, like, okay, yep. there's the nose, there's the eyes of the, you know, that you had in your character, but it, it doesn't have the full, yep. the full nuance of everything. And so it's easy for you to tear apart. And it makes you feel good. Yeah. But it, it does nothing for the conversation because the person you're talking to just goes, well, yeah, that's not what I believe anyway. So what you're arguing against right now is has nothing to do with what I believe. Mm. So you're not actually engaging in a conversation or an argument. So it makes you feel good, but it doesn't do anything for the conversation. So um, I can't remember who came up with this idea, but 
what you should be doing in a conversation or an argument is to steal man. So you should you should be trying to understand yeah. their perspective so well and to be able to recount it to the person you're talking about in a way that makes that person think, God, I wish I had have thought of it. I wish I was able to articulate it the way you'd articulated because you yeah. have understood my position 100% and that's exactly what I believe. And then if you want to tear down the steel man, yeah, okay. Yeah. So we should be trying to steel man each other's arguments to really understand what the person's saying and not just be looking to, you know, score cheap points in an argument, but to actually be trying to grapple with, you know, really understand what the other person's saying and then work from that. Yeah. Like it's not saying you shouldn't attack each other. No. Um, well, no, you shouldn't attack each other, but you, it's not saying you shouldn't attack other people's views. Mm. Absolutely you should. But you should actually understand what their view is first and you should, you know, not try and belittle it and just, you know, that straw man thing where you're just taking off the easy parts without really engaging with the, the full depth of yeah. what they're saying. Right on. There we go. Straw manning, steel manning. Steel, steel manning. manning. I haven't heard that before. I love that idea. Yeah, me too. It's not my idea. I don't yeah, know yeah. who it was. It goes back to that you, you want to be able to hear someone's argument to the point where you would almost believe it. And good conversation, good listening techniques, good you know, all of these say that you should clarify the other person's position to display that you have listened so they yeah. feel like that you've listened and you've heard them. So you clarify what they say. And if you can articulate an even better picture of what they're saying, mm. I, I love that idea. Yeah. 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 All right. On to the next one. All right. Next one is, I don't think atheists should ever talk like they know that God doesn't exist because you can't possibly know that. Yeah. Like people talk about that the Tasmanian tiger is extinct in Tasmania. And it probably is. Like, we haven't seen one for, I don't know, 100 years or whatever it is. But, I mean, you can't know for certain. Like, there's massive areas in Tasmania that are wilderness. And there probably isn't one in there. We probably would have seen evidence for it in the last 100 years. Mm. But, you know, I, I know be. I know some characters in Tassie that <laughs> say they have. I'm yeah. not, I wouldn't discount those people completely. But I still would go with you're probably not. <laughs> yeah, probably not. And so with God, like, it's one thing to argue against, like, a specific God, like the Christian God, but it's another thing entirely to say there is no God at all. Like, I just, there's no way you can claim that because it's it's very possible that God could create the world and then not intervene in it and you would have no idea. There's just no way that you could know whether there's a God or not. Yep. And so, you know, absolutely argue against a loving God, argue against, you know, an all-powerful God argue against, you know, specific religious gods, so the Christian god or the Islamic god or whatever, but don't don't try and argue that there definitely is no god. Um, and that sort of ties into another thing that atheists often do. They talk about, like uh, Ricky Gervais has talked about how he believes in one less god than a believer. Like so a Christian is an atheist for every other god oh, other right. than his own. Mm -hmm. And so Gervais is just saying, look, I'm just an atheist for one more God than you are. We're pretty much the same. Okay. It's it's a funny thing to say. Yeah. And it's a gimmicky sort of thing to say that makes people on your side of the argument laugh and go, yeah, how stupid are they? But it, it's not real. Mm. Like no one believes in all of the gods, do they? No. You'd have to be an idiot to believe in all <laughs> of the gods. So it, it's completely different. Yeah. And what about um, atheists who, you know, when they keep sort of banging on about this God that they don't believe in, I'm like going, well, hang on, you don't believe in God. So why, you know, why does it feel like you hate God if you don't even believe in God? You know, so. Yeah. What do you think about that? Should they classify themselves as a, as something else? <laughs> you know, should it be, they're an anti-theist more than they are an atheist. <laughs> I just find it interesting sometimes when, atheists are debating Christians that they'll paint a picture of, of this God that they don't believe in, this wrathful, angry, evil God. And I'm going, well, you, you don't even believe in God. <laughs> so That sort of ties into what we were saying before. Like you're straw manning at that point because the believer doesn't believe in an angry, wrathful God. Mm. Like no one believes that their God is, you know, like Hitchens used to say, no one believes their God is the great dictator in the sky. Like no one believes that. Stop saying it. It's not helpful. There might be some Christians that believe that their God is the great dictator in the sky to people that aren't them. Yeah. Yeah. But yes, I know what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. I think the thing that concerns me most about that sort of talk is how 
it sounds more and more like you're trying to prove yourself to your own tribe. Like you're trying to convince the other people that aren't believers that you're you're really committed and that you really understand that, you know, this other group of people believe in this evil thing. And I really don't think atheism should be a tribe. There's no reason, like we don't have a tribe of people who don't believe in astrology. Mm-hmm. Like you don't have people setting up that as part of their identity. You mm. just go, well, I don't believe in that. So, yeah. You know, if other people want to, yeah, they can. They're crazy, but I'm yeah. not gonna, I'm not gonna let that define my life. That yeah. would be silly. Yeah, you're right. And so if you don't, there's no anti-astrology tribe. No, yeah, no. Yeah. And so if you don't believe in a god, okay, cool, that's fine. But you don't have to then make it your life's work to go around destroying everyone else's beliefs. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. Now again, I- I- engaging conversation, absolutely. But you don't have to become evangelical about it, where you. are sounding a lot like the preachers on street corners who are trying to convert people. But, yeah, but if you, like, I'm going to defend atheism here. <laughs> and even Like, if you think that, you know, religious belief is pernicious and is bad for humanity and you believe that the world would be better if people didn't believe all of that stuff and you want to be true to what you believe or or what you value if you don't want to call it a belief whatever um then you're gonna you know get out into public and you're gonna say things and you're gonna try and change people's minds and that's okay and because atheism has done that there is an atheist tribe there just is (laughs) even though you think that maybe there shouldn't be because like you'd rather that it was more like astrology because there isn't an anti there's not that's not a tribe but atheism for me, I think that there is a tribal mentality there. Mm. And that's not going to be with all atheists, obviously, but as generalizing, yeah, there's a tribal mentality. And with tribal mentalities comes, you know, that clouds our thinking and we end up with confirmation bias around all sorts of issues. And so we start looking for what we want to see and discounting other people. And yeah, so we end up with all of the issues that we end up with with tribes. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of the things that annoy actually like even, you know, one of your favorites, you know, Sam Harris. Uh and he doesn't class himself as an atheist, but he's seen as one of the the what is it, the four what are they called? Horsemen. The four horsemen of the what new atheism movement, is that what it's called? That's what it's called. All right. Well he there was a recent uh debate where he was he was accused of tribal thinking and he's going well no i i don't do tribal thinking i'm above tribal thinking and then this person um wrote a piece on on his responses there just pointing out that there is confirmation bias here and there is tribalistic thinking within you know and but th- those things lead us away from seeing that that that's what we're doing you know and so even the greatest thinker who thinks he's above tribalistic thinking or above you know, he was saying that he's just completely rational. I think that's, a, again, that's getting back to the arrogance. I think it's a bit much to say that you are above everybody else when it comes to everyone else is irrational, you're rational. Yeah. Uh, you might be more rational <laughs> than others, but to say that, that you're above all of that nonsense yeah. of humanity, I, I don't, it's just too deeply ingrained in us, too deeply ingrained. Yeah. It's also, I think it's dangerous to ever say that you over there have this problem, but I don't have any of that problem myself. Like, I think that's a dangerous place to go. Um, I've read quite a few economists over the last few years, and one of the things that fascinates me with a few of them is they'd be doing studies on the way we spend our money and how how irrational we are in the way we spend our money at certain times. There was one, I can't remember who he was, but he was talking about home loans and how you justify spending, you know, ten thousand dollars on a couch if you're in the same process as of buying a house, spending, you know, four hundred thousand dollars or what's another ten thousand. Yep. Whereas when yep. when you've already got the house and you're going to buy one, you're not going to spend ten thousand dollars on a couch. It's ridiculous. Yeah. And like the the dude interviewing him was like, yeah, well, like how do people justify that sort of thing? And he was like, oh no no, I'm talking about myself. I did this myself. Mm. And so like I love that when people are able to go, yeah, look. Human beings have this problem, and I'm one of them. Yeah, there are all these different cognitive biases that, yeah, that affect all of us suffer from them. affect our critical thinking, and yeah. So, so I just think when when atheists claim that they're above that, 
yeah, that's, again, unhelpful. Yep. I will see that they may be more above it <laughs> at times, but they're not, free. I think, they're not free of their humanity. I think the good part about atheism is I think their idealistic position is that there would be no tribes, and I like that. Like, Because if you got rid of all religions, I think you would be a lot closer to a society with no tribes, and I think that would be a really good thing. Yeah. But until you get there, you're still part of a tribe. Yeah, but it's, I mean, tribalism and and cognitive biases and confirmation bias and all of these things, they've been with us for, you know, millennia because they were were with us on, like you've, you've spoken before about how it affected us when we were cavemen and wandering around the fields and you would see certain things because you'd need to see them and you would not, I don't know how we, you'd probably be able to paint the picture again. I don't know how you painted that picture. but Yeah, you're talking about um, false positives and yeah. false negatives and, yeah, how it was more important to, to err on the side of caution that if, you know, you see some bushes rustling, that it's better for you to go, hmm, there might be something there, even if chances are there isn't going to be anything there. It's better for you to think, hmm, I better be careful right now. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so these things are like they're precision engineered by natural selection for us to, well, to convince us that we're seeing clearly and thinking rationally even when we're not. And that's just so deeply ingrained. (laughs) Yeah, it is. But I, I would want us to be aware of that and to be wanting to be progressive enough to not just be aware of it but to also overcome it where we can. Yep. Yeah, and which yeah, I think that's is, what I was going to say. Which I think is what Sam Harris is trying really bloody hard to do. Um, yeah. But then for him to think that he's there, you know, he's yep. at, he's at this enlightened height. Yeah, <laughs> I worry about that. Yeah, that's where we're unique as human beings in that we can look and observe who we are as human beings and how we became the people with, that we are and the biases and all that sort of stuff, we can look at that, Mm. but we can also transcend it. So we can look back at, you know, what's been helpful for us evolutionarily Mm. and then we can say we don't want to be like that anymore. Tribalism has been really helpful for us. Um, You know, when you're in a group of people and there's other groups of people 10 kilometres down the road, um, we need to know that the group of people that we're around are our crew because if it was just like we trusted everyone, we would be dead thousands of years ago Mm. our species wouldn't have survived so we had to set up our own tribes that we trusted and be skeptical of other tribes we had to but we don't need to be like that anymore it's helped us evolutionarily but it doesn't help us now but how are we ever going to know that we're sure that we've succeeded yeah we won't yeah but you you keep fighting it yeah yeah fine but yeah so to claim that you have I'm not saying that he even – he just claimed that he had it in one instance, I, you know. Yeah. Like, I don't think and, he was necessarily claiming that it was in in all of his life or anything like that, but yeah. Look, Sam Harris is a fascinating guy yeah. and I would even say it's possible that he's right because he's done so much meditation, he spends a lot of time not seeing him as an individual. Like he doesn't believe in a self. He doesn't believe that he is – any way unique compared to everyone else in the world he just thinks that all of us are connected in a very deep and special way and that it's not by his intelligence that he is who he is and that you know the stupidest person in the world is who they are it's just pure luck it's just genetics and that's all it is how does he expect us everyday human beings to be like him and and to transcend all of this stuff you know when well ma- because because that's what he sort of asks everyone to do, essentially. You know, you can be like me. Because we can be persuaded by arguments yeah. and by reason and by logic. Yeah. And you can hear an argument and it can just run counter to everything that you've believed in the past. And if you actually sit with it, you can go, oh, God, maybe I've been wrong. And I think that's what all of us should be looking to do. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, cool. But, look, yeah, enough about Sam Harris. All right. No more Sam. What's next? Sam Harris does this. <laughs> I thought we weren't talking about Sam. What does he do? Christopher Hitchens did it more. Right. He was the guy that I've seen do it really over and over again. Don't talk about Christianity like it's only done evil, like it's only been mm. an evil thing in society. Like you'll talk about, 
you know, the priests molesting kids or you'll talk about the witch burnings and you'll talk about the way Christianity was used to condone slavery mm. and in Nazi Germany. But then you'll give it no credit for any of the good stuff. I mean, never talk about that sort of stuff. I don't know how you can do that. Like, you got to look at both sides of the coin. And I think, yeah, Christianity has been involved in some evil stuff. Yeah. And it's also been a driver for really good stuff. Like, Hitchens used to have this challenge whenever we debated religious people. He would say, give me one positive thing you do that I can't do. And there's just nothing. Yep. Because atheists are capable of everything that... Yeah that religious people are capable of, of course. Yep. You can be loving, of course you can. Yep. You can you can do everything. Yeah, you can be compassionate, you can be generous, of course you can. And then he would say, you know, think of something that people do in the name of religion that I wouldn't do. And, of course, there's, you know, there's heaps of stuff. Suicide bombing is the most obvious mm-hmm. um, that is done purely for religious reasons and that, you know, an atheist would never do. Of course that's true. But that's not the full question because there's also... Give me an example of something that you actually do do because of your religion. And there are a lot of people in our world that do really good things because of their religion. Mm. Now, could could they do it without their faith? They could, do but they, would do, they? Do, yeah, do I don't they? know. Yeah. Mm. Like you look at all the charities, you look at all the volunteers in our society, what percentage of those volunteers are religious? Yeah. I would guess it's hugely religious. Yeah, well, social justice, I still believe it, you know, it has its origins in... Christianity mostly, but, you know, in religions, yeah. But when you look around now at all of the, the social justice things happening, is, is that all? No, you know, there's plenty of very secular, lots of atheist people out on social justice campaigns and so on. So, but yeah, I think its origin is very much embedded within Christianity. So I think Christianity, like obviously it has done this evil stuff in the past, but I think mm. like Christian, like you and I don't know other religions as well as we know Christianity, mm. but Christianity has this awesome focus of forgiveness and grace and love and justice and mercy and all this sort of stuff that I think really does orient people towards those sort of uh, values. Mm. And I, I think it is a massively helpful worldview in those sort of ways. Like, as I say, like I'm, I'm no fan of Christianity in a bunch of other ways, but with those ones, yeah, I think we've got to give credit where credit's due, and I think religion has had its hand in many good things in society as well as some of the bad things. Yep. So acknowledging that <laughs> before, yeah. you, before you tear apart the other beliefs, you know, yeah, all right. Yeah, well, it's part of that steel manning thing. Yes. Like if, if you're just painting religion as all evil, well, it's not. And people that are religious will just see that you're someone who hasn't actually looked at what religion is like. You're just throwing lobs from the other tribe. Yep. Come in, engage, do a, do a Louis Thoreau where you're actually coming <laughs> in, learning what it's like to be a member of that tribe. Do some learning before you go on your rampage of abuse. Like if you were to look at the charities in Australia, like if you were just, if you got rid of all religion in Australia, like what percentage of charities would still exist in Australia? Name three charities that don't have a foundation in Ooh. Christianity. Yeah, I can't, but I can name three that do. <laughs> yeah, oh, you could name 15 yeah. that do. Well, I mean, I mean, there's a bunch that I don't know. I don't know. You know, I wouldn't know, but I would assume that many of them do have a, you know, their origin was out of Christianity. Yeah. Yeah. Like there's Medicine Sans Frontiers. Like that's the only, that's literally the only one that I know that yeah. is a secular organization. Yep. Like I think Oxfam comes out of Christianity and it's it's one of the more secular ones these days. Yeah. It's not blatantly Christian, you know, world view, world vision, blatantly Christian, um, you know, Salvation Army, yeah. Red Cross. Yeah, I was about to say that. <laughs> yeah. Pick one. Um, you know, all your domestic ones, Anglicare and Bapt care and and there's been a lot of progress that's come from you know in the way that we do you know things like you know the ending of slavery and well not that slavery is <laughs> finished but values around how we see that and putting a, a bunch of slavery to bed it's helped us move forward in in a lot of ways Christianity was both sides of that debate it was like there was a lot yeah. there was a lot in the Bible that justified slavery and 
you know, when people often talk about Wilberforce, he was a Christian and he was instrumental in slavery being ended. Yeah, but the other side of the the people he was arguing against were all Christians as well. Yeah. So yeah, and but slavery existed a long time before that as well. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. But so religion was used to justify slavery. Yes. It was also used as a as an argument that you know all people are God's creation and we're all created equally. So it was used on both sides of the argument. Let's be honest about yeah. where religion sits. Yeah. That brings me to a sort of one of my points. You know, I get I get frustrated when atheists accuse me or even when you accuse me <laughs> <laughs> of, of picking and choosing the bits of, you know, religion or of the Bible that I that I like and that I and I don't like. It's like you're just picking and choosing. You know, so it, in the sense that that relates to that, you know, it was one argument from the Bible against another argument from the Bible, you know, when it comes to slavery, yeah. they, you know. So, uh, I mean, I'm not a big defender of, of the Bible, but I often find atheists, you know, as sort of fundamental and and literalist in, in the way that they sort of paint the Bible as, you know, extremely conservative type Christians. And, and that frustrates me because I think that, I, again, that's not that's not delving deep into, it's not putting context around every everything that's written. So they'll, they'll throw, you know, or you will throw lines at the Bible at me and I'm going, well, there's, there's just so much more context and, and it's complex. And do you want me to be a literalist? Do you want me to believe Every bit of it, if I'm going to say that I'm, I'm, do you want me to throw stones at you and put you to death? Because, you know, like what, why, <laughs> why are you making this argument against a more progressive Christianity? Yeah. Why do you want it to be a regressive <laughs> Christianity? Well, I can give you an answer to that. Okay. Give me one. So I think the reason why I would raise those issues and why I presume other atheists would raise those issues is because... If you're going to call yourself a Christian, mm. like the Bible has to be part of that. Like a, I, I don't quite understand how you would call yourself a Christian without the Bible being some part of that. And I think if you're a Christian and you hold the Bible to be an important text, you do have to have a justification for why it would contain some really horrific stuff. Like you and I agree it contains some really horrific stuff in there. Mm. And I think an intelligent Christian would have to have, like, it's not good enough to just say, I don't know. I don't think that's a good enough answer. You don't have to know why God put it in there, but I think you do have to be able to come up with a reason why God would have put it there, like why God would have had it in the Bible that if you're raped that you have to marry the person that raped you. So, like, I think you have to have an answer. Yeah, and the answer, you know, around, you know, that sort of thing is put it in the context of the people that were living in their time within their culture and and put it all in the context of who wrote it and who they were writing it to and put it in the context of who decided that that book ended up in the library of of the Bible and, and why they, you know, let it retain the words that it did and in the context of who translated it, you know, it's like this... Because, like, you know, in that story, why why would you have the woman who was raped, you know, have to marry the the rapist? You know, it's and part of that was to ensure that she wasn't on her own. And yeah, and so I she was safe. Yeah, and I think it's horrific. But I'm not from that culture in that time. You know. Yeah. So is it more horrific to just be, you know, left on your own and and cast aside? You know, I. Yeah. So, that, my so there problem were, with that. Yeah. But my problem with that is that the way you're talking about it is talking about like the Bible is just another book in the long history of humanity. It's not special in any way, shape or form. And I don't understand how a Christian can hold that. Like if you're a Christian, you have to think there's something unique about the Bible. And if your justification for the, you know, the really strange bits in the Bible is just, well, it's just a book written by humans. Well, of course it's a bit book written by humans. No one's disagreeing with that. Um, but a Christian has to be arguing that this is somehow God inspired and I don't understand how you can justify those weird wacky books in the Bible have anything to do with God if you believe God is loving and powerful and all that. Again, I don't worship the Bible. <laughs> I find a lot of it helpful and because it's, I mean, the thing is it, it contains the story of Jesus, you know, which is the thing that Christianity revolves around. Um, yeah. But, you know, a Christian the fundamentals for me are, you know, 
you believe in Jesus, that Jesus was the son of God, you believe in God, you believe that there was a creator, you know, and, you know, that Jesus died and was resurrected. They're the... Yeah, yeah. That's some pretty that's some pretty extraordinary things to to believe, but they're the main things. And I so I don't know the Bible. I don't know. I just I think atheists will often leave out so much of the context. You know, like I, I even saw just recently it was Rob Bell talking about the the turn the other cheek part of the Bible, where you know someone slaps you across the cheek, then you turn the other cheek. And and the reading most people just sort of see that is in this really sort of passive, submissive sort of, well, if you're going to hit me, I'll let you hit me again. I'm not going to fight back. And, and he's yeah. going, well, actually, what it means <laughs> um, is that if someone slaps you and they can, only, they can only use one hand back in that culture, in that context, because the other hand was used for wiping your ass, right? So you're only allowed to touch people with your, with your one hand. So if you slap someone <laughs> across the face, right, if you slap someone, <laughs> but slapping someone is a form of it's humiliating them. You're better than they are. So you slap them across the face. And if you turn the other cheek, they can't slap you because your face is looking the wrong way. And so now if they want to hit you, they actually have to hit you. They can't slap you across the face anymore. So it's not this submissive, passive thing. So you're saying, if you're going to hit me, you're going to have to do it as an equal, right? I am not less than you, you know? So it's, it's standing up, but it's, it's standing up in a nonviolent way. You know, so there's, I'm just saying that, that if you don't go into the depth of the story and of the words and, and it, it's complex and I wish it was simple, but it is this, we're going back thousands of years to other cultures, other times, you know, other understandings and, and, and there's language differences. And, but I find I'm like going, oh, so I've learned something new from that. So I learned things from that book that I find enriching. So if your argument is that the Bible was a really profound book for people reading it 2,000 years ago, mm. I would say, yep, I agree. Mm. But most Christians wouldn't say that's all it is. Most Christians would say it's the Word of God yeah, and yeah. that it is relevant today, right now. And I just think that's a much harder <laughs> thing to justify. It's very like, I, you know, the woman that's raped in that culture, Maybe that was the best thing. Yeah. It's horrific for a 21st century person to hear, mm. but maybe that was the best thing. Mm. But today, it's definitely not. That's right. And I don't want anyone reading those words and getting confused as to whether that is still the best way to deal with things. Yeah. Like people so don't, still so don't... read the Bible and <laughs> use it to justify abortion, uh, like being anti-abortion. Yeah. And they still use it to justify being anti-homosexuality and a bunch of other things. Yeah. And so why can't, you, why can't I pick and choose then <laughs> and go, there are things from that, from history that you want to learn so that you can learn from history so that you don't repeat mistakes or so that you, you go, you know, oh, this is a way that people progressed. What are we doing to progress now? You know, whatever. So utilizing it, but not being held to a literal account of it, you know, that's, yeah. so why, why are you having a go at me for picking and choosing? <laughs> Yeah. Isn't that what you what you want? <laughs> of yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, well, yeah, obviously you can and should pick and choose from it. But that's because I look at the Bible and th see it as being a text written by humans and that it is definitely not perfect. Yeah. And there are there's stuff in it that maybe it was right for the time then, but it's definitely not right for the time now. There's also stuff in it that I look back and go, it was wrong for the time back then. Yeah, I'll agree with that too. And so I just don't understand. Like, so if you're a Christian, then I think you have to, like, I'm not saying there isn't a justification for it, but I think you should be expected to have to give you a justification for how the heck you can justify why that stuff's in the Bible. And like, how can you call yourself a Christian when your religious text has horrific stuff like, you know, 42 boys getting killed by a bear? just because they called the Lord some silly names or something like that. Like there's, there's horrendous <laughs> stuff in there. There is, there is. And I, and I don't want to defend those things. <laughs> yeah. Um, so maybe, maybe I should stop calling myself a Christian, but that doesn't okay, mean well, that I don't believe in Jesus and that I don't believe in, that doesn't mean that I do believe, or I fall on the side. <clears throat> cough, cough. <clears throat> I fall on the agnostic theist side of, you know, believing in Jesus and God and a creator. So that's, so is what you're saying that 
you're a Christian because the bits about Jesus mm. you hold really close. You read those bits, you resonate with the stuff that Jesus talked about. Yeah. Everything else in the Bible is take it or leave it. Like you, you can read the rest of it and work out which bits you want to go with and which bits you don't want to go with. Um, it makes like there yeah. is no yeah. Like I mean that that is a way to do it, but I also do remember a mutual friend of ours going. That makes you the what is it the you're you're claiming that you're now the the source of all truth or all wisdom or something. You know we have to do that though. I know, I know, but it is it is a um it is a rather hubristic sort of approach to say that you know to choose one thing and not another and it's not very humble <laughs> is it say i i am the arbiter of truth i know <laughs> which bits are right and which bits aren't well i don't but i'm going to well, pick, i'm going to pick and choose and maybe i'll <clears throat> maybe i'll be right sometimes and maybe i won't be but I, I want to be open to hearing something in a different light and going oh okay that bit makes sense to me now yeah but i mean yeah but you you've got that relationship with god <sighs> where where god talks to you and you hear his voice, his still quiet whisper. <laughs> Go back and listen to our relationship with God episode, people. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, I, I do not have that because there's too much noise in my head. <laughs> yeah. I guess just going right back to the start of it, the things that atheists do that we find frustrating, wish they'd stop, is wanting me to be a literalist. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, or or being as literalist as fundamentalists. I'm like, please try and help understand my pick and choose progressive view and accept it. Why won't you accept it? Why do you think I'm being irrational and illogical? <laughs> because I am a bit, but you know, yeah. Yeah. I mean, a big thing for me is that faith is, is not devoid of rational thought. It's not devoid of reason. The same as I also see that lack of it is not devoid of of heart. So someone who believes isn't an idiot and someone who doesn't isn't heartless and cold. I, I just think that's ridiculous when we paint each other as stuff like that. Yeah. We're so much more similar <laughs> than we are different. Yeah. It's one of the epiphanies that strikes me quite regularly when I'm listening to political discourse mm. in our countries that like the left and the right just slagging each other off and it's just like you guys are so similar on really the important stuff and yeah like there are much bigger problems in our world than the stuff you guys are disagreeing about like the minimum wage matters but it doesn't really matter <laughs> there's bigger issues in our world believe me and the left and the right would agree on all those issues mm. you know genital mutilation no it's bad mm. child slavery no it's bad yeah all of that just flinging mud at each other, and I guess we've been um, throwing a few grenades <laughs> here tonight, but it's, I mean, Christianity is a tribe and atheism can be a tribe, and that's not so bad as long as there's, you know, cross-tribal communication, but when we don't listen to each other and build up steel men <laughs> for each other and and keep a good discourse, when we're not talking to each other, when we're not listening to each other, then, yeah, that's not healthy for our society. No. I've got a quote here that we could end with, Chris. Okay. This is uh, Bertrand Russell. Do you know who he is? I don't know who he is. The name sounds familiar, but yeah, I don't know. Let's leave that bit out. This is Bertrand Russell. He's uh, someone that I know lots about. <laughs> <laughs> tell us his, his tell us his life story, Nick. Oh, I read his biography. I'm all over that stuff. <laughs> what did Bertrand have to say? Bertie. Yeah. Bertie said... The whole problem with the world is that the fools and fanatics are always so certain of themselves and the wiser people so full of doubt. Yeah. Let's not be so sure of ourselves, people. Let's uh, be honest about the doubts we have, Let's, especially in conversation with people we disagree with. We don't have to pretend we have all the answers. We don't. No. None of us do. I guess it's it comes down to being humble enough and, you know, having that humility to be aware that we have our biases and, and our irrational thoughts and we don't see it all and, yeah. So here in the Eternity Ward, mm -hmm. we love everyone. We love Christians. We love atheists. We even love those crazy Scientologists. We're <laughs> going to have a crack at you at some point <laughs> in the future too. We even love your dog pilot, Chris. You don't even have to be human. 
Yeah, we're a pretty crazy lot. Humanity plus. <laughs> plus pilot. Yeah. No, I love it. I, we're alive. We're on a rock, spinning through space, around a star, all of us together, throwing little grenades at each other. And we're, yeah, like, and we're able to contemplate the idea that our every every atom in your body was formed in the explosion of a star. Yeah, how crazy is that? Like every single part of me was built in the explosion of a star. That's just fascinating. Yeah, that's that's one of the things that when like when religious people talk about that atheism is a sort of nihilistic, a hopeless sort of existence like hopeless in the sense of there being no hope and no awe. And I'm just like, man, science has got plenty of awe in it. Yeah. You just look at that stuff. It's amazing. Yeah. We're all in it together. We are. So cheers for joining us here on the Eternity Ward. And we look forward to having your company again. Yeah, if you want to lob grenades at us. Yeah, yeah. Do it. I want to hear it. I want to hear what we're doing wrong. What am I screwing up? (laughs) I'm going to stand behind you, though, if... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> yeah well it's all right chris it's probably me that's screwing up cool well cheers thank you we'll catch you next time bye for me much love god here again are you shaking your head incredulously or nodding in approval well if you got something out of this episode you could really help those poor idiots by contributing to or supporting the eternity ward you can leave reviews on itunes or wherever you listen to it you can share it on social media or discuss it in your blog podcast or fellowship group subscribe like nod your head raise your fist send a hallelujah i don't know but don't send a prayer because i'm kind of busy right now join the discussion in the comment section ask questions and do come back and join us again here on the eternity ward Thank you.